throughout the 1840s, there's a lot of unrest. Um, there's revolts, there's counter revolts. Um, you know, the condition, the authoritarians are clamping down their control of society, uh, especially in Europe where a lot of these ideas are being developed. Um, so you have some manifestos written towards the end of the, of the uh, 1840s, early 1850s. Of course, this was also when Marx wrote the Communist Manifesto. Uh, but in opposition to authoritarian communism, we have uh, Gustav Molinari in 1849 writes the production of security. He was a liberal economist and he basically endeavored to show that we didn't need the state, everything should be subjected to the competition of market forces. And he is well, often cited as uh, a major influence by market anarchists to this day. Uh, market anarchists, of course, being uh, people who feel that uh, kind of market society is a part of anarchism, uh, the buying and selling, uh, the peaceful exchange, uh, whereas, uh, for example, social anarchism often used um, where there, there are other arrangements. There's labor federations, there's gift economies, uh, things of that nature. So there's a lot of overlap and there are a lot of different ways those labels are used, but generally that's how you could think of it. Um, so you also have in 1850, Anselm Belagarigues uh, has a journal called uh, uh, Anarchy, a Journal of Order. And he writes a manifesto in there that says anarchy is order, whereas government is civil war. Um, and uh, 1851, Proudhon writes general idea of the revolution in the 19th century, major text. So moving on where the ideas and the action come together, in 1864, you have the first international, or the International Working Men's Association. And this is where you have, uh, you have a major exchange of ideas going on in there. It contained, uh, uh, Karl Marx was in there, and then you also have uh, anarcho-communists like uh, Mikhail Bakunin are in there, and he kind of denounces Marx and denounces the idea that you can ever have a peaceful socialist society uh, by instituting it from above. And I think the experience of authoritarian communism in the 20th century really bears this out, where any time you have people trying to set things equal by an inherently unequal position of authority, you're going to have uh, disaster, massacres, um, all that stuff that we've come to know and fear about the 20th century. Um, so Bakunin was a Russian anarchist. Uh, another Russian anarchist, uh, Pierre Kropotkin, uh, came a little bit after Bakunin, um, and he had a lot of ideas he studied evolution, he came up with the idea of, uh, of mutual aid, that uh, species that cooperate are more fit to survive than species that don't. Um, so this was contrasted towards um, more uh, winner-take-all ideas of social evolution. And this idea of mutual aid is one where people where work together for mutual benefit that's been profoundly influential. So. Um, then later on in 1871, you have the Paris Commune. Um, basically, after the Franco-Prussian War, um, the France was kind of uh, in disarray, and uh, in mid-March to late May, uh, a lot of you know people kind of took over uh, Paris, and there were a lot of anarchists involved. There, there were people who weren't anarchists. Um, essentially, they had a militia that was supposed to defend against the Prussians, and uh, the militia was gaining a lot of power and the French government was concerned about this, ordinary people having power. Um, you know, the militia annexed a lot of cannons that um, were claimed by the French government. So the army was sent to disarm them. Um, but the army, uh, again, was from the same sectors of society than that the militia was from. And a lot of them just defected. They wouldn't disarm the workers. They wouldn't disarm the townspeople and they, they, they basically joined up with them. And this really, uh, this really frightened the French government, so they, they initiated a siege and then a campaign of conquest against Paris that resulted in quite a lot of deaths. Um, so Bakunin says about the, the Paris Commune, contrary to the belief of authoritarian communists, which I deem completely wrong, that a social revolution must be decreed and organized either by a dictatorship 
or by a constituent assembly emerging from a political revolution, our friends, the Paris, Paris socialists, believe that revolution could neither be made nor brought to its full development except by the spontaneous and continued action of the masses, the groups and associations of the people. So that's kind of the idea that uh, revolution must come from below. Uh, people who try to oppose it are just authoritarians. Um, so in uh, 1881, Benjamin Tucker, famous individualist anarchist, founds the journal Liberty. Um, he was uh, very much influenced by Proudhon, uh, Warren, uh, Stirner, and egoism. He's also, this, this school is also where you see Spencer, Herbert Spencer, uh, the, uh, the noted uh, liberal philosopher coming into play um, and his law of equal liberty that uh, everyone has the right to claim the liberty to do, do as they will uh, so long as they don't infringe upon the like liberty of any other individual. Um, so Tucker and those in what came to be called the Boston Anarchist School, they generally favored an evolutionary approach. Um, they focused on education and persuasion uh, rather than, say, trying to overturn uh, you know, overturn institutions immediately. Um, so, in 1886, you had the Haymarket Affair. Um, so, essentially, um, workers who are organized uh, a lot by anarchists decided that that they're only going to work for eight hours. That was a condition of their employment. Um, so, May 1st, 1886, was when the eight-hour day was going to be enforced by just walking off the job after eight hours and enough people were in labor unions where this could actually be effective. Um, so they did that and then there were a lot of state crackdowns, there were strikes, and it, on May 4th there was a demonstration in Chicago's Haymarket Square. Um, there were speeches and the crowd was starting to disperse and while it was dispersing an armed contingent of police started attacking the, uh, the ralliers. Um, so, in this melee, somebody threw a bomb at the police, and the police opened fire on the crowd. Um, so, there were eight anarchists were blamed for what happened, who really, they, they didn't have, the only way they were even on trial was because they were anarchists. They expressed this idea that allegedly led to this bomb being thrown. Most of them weren't even there. Yeah, like, yeah most, a lot of them weren't even there at the time. Um, so, this is uh, a lot of state violence you see against anarchists and strikers. Um, there's, there's a lot of this going on anytime there's a peaceful demonstration, uh, the state's there to break it up. And keep in mind that the whole economy of the time was founded on robbery. Uh, you know, feudalism hadn't been negated, there was the, just the power had passed on to different people. And there, there wasn't a free economy where people could build things up. They were all restricted. Um, so within this context of uh, state violence, you start to get uh, anarchist violence more so than, than in the past. Um, the idea of propaganda of the deed comes up, where as opposed to propaganda of the word, where you talk about things, propaganda of the deed, you go and do something that's going to inspire people um, to um, overthrow the, uh, you know, people who dominated society and a lot of times this took the the form of bombings or assassinations um, Johann Most was a guy who uh, had popularized the idea um, one example could be seen in Alexander Berkman's um, attack on uh, Henry Clay Frick after Frick's company had sent people to basically shoot strikers um, the, the attack on Frick, it didn't take his life, and it just inspired a lot of hostility against uh, anarchism and anarchists. Um, so then in, in Europe, you have uh, Ravachol, uh, a Frenchman um, famous for the idea of, uh, well, he, was, he didn't come up with the idea, but uh, this idea of illegalism where the individual breaks laws to empower himself, that the laws of society uh, were made to restrain the individual and breaking them is a form of personal liberation and also the idea that because things have been stolen from the people that individual reclamation taking them back uh, was legitimate. Um, Ravishal uh, was executed after some violent actions he took um, and then uh, in uh, around the turn of the 19th and 20th century uh, there was a, uh, a demonstration 
in Italy uh, over high bread prices. And th these unarmed demonstrators uh, went to the, the, the palace, um, and uh, the palace guards opened fire on them with cannons, and 90 people were killed. After this, the king of Italy, uh, Umberto I, commended the officer who massacred all these people. Uh, he rewarded him uh, for and praised his brave defense of the palace from these uh, unarmed, peaceful demonstrators. Uh, this outraged uh, uh, a particular Italian anarchist who was actually living in Patterson, New Jersey at the time. Um, he, uh, his name was uh, Gaetano Bresci. Um, he went to Italy. He got a gun. He and when the king was uh, making a public appearance, he shot him. Uh, killing him almost immediately. Um, Bresci was then sentenced to life imprisonment where he died within a year, allegedly by suicide.